The materials that I'll be using for this crochet sweater tutorial are some yarn, a crochet hook, scissors, a darning needle, and of course a measuring tape. Now circling back to the yarn, this is going to be a number three DK weight yarn. And as you guys can see, it is a little bit thinner than a standard number four worsted weight. I've also picked out a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook that I will be using to correspond with this yarn. So again, this is a nice 5.0. On top of that, like always, I will be using a pair of scissors to help me cut my yarn as I'm working. We also need a handy dandy darning needle to help us weave in any of the ends towards the later part of this project. And last but not least, I will be using a measuring tape just to help me get the measurements completely right for my body size. Like a ton of my tutorials, they are always made to measure. So feel free to use a measuring tape in order to make this sweater fit you like a glove. To start crocheting this project, I actually want to begin with my front panel, which does consist of a ribbed band. So I'm going to start here with my tail and create a slip knot and insert my 5.0 right through. So at this point I do need a starting chain. What I'm going to do is start off with a chain of 10. So here is my cute little chain of 10. At this point, because I will be working with double crochet, I'm gonna chain two more for turning corners, and this does not count as a stitch. So to begin working row one for our ribbed band, I'm going to yarn over and skip the first two loops in my row and insert my hook right into the third chain. So I'm gonna pick up that first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And I'm gonna repeat the double crochets all the way down my chain. So at the very end, I should have 10 double crochet in my first row. I'm coming up here to the very last stitch in my row. So this makes 10 double crochet. And what I wanna do for the entirety of this ribbed band is I want to work in the back loops only. So what I'm gonna do here to start row two is chain two like always. And again, that chain two does not count as a stitch. So at this point, I'm gonna carry on with my double crochets. But what I wanna do is pick up the back loop only on my work. So you should only have one loop instead of picking up both and go ahead and finish out your double crochets. Again, I'm going to yarn over, find the next stitch in my row, and pick up the back loop only. And just continue to work with these simple double crochets all the way down your row. And into that very last stitch, I will actually pick up both of the two top loops, just because I don't want there to be any gap or spacing. So that is the only stitch where I will pick up both of the two top loops. But again, for the rest of the row, I will be working into that back loop only. So at this point, this is what two rows of the ribbed band completed looks like. And as you can see, there is a slight ribbing effect, which looks perfect. So let's go ahead and stick with that. Again, here for row three, I will always start off with a chain of two and turn my work. And just like row two, I'm going to yarn over and pick up only the back loops on every single stitch. So I picked up that back loop and I'm going to finish out my double crochet. Again, yarn over, back loop only, and double crochet. All right, so at this point, now that we've officially started making the ribbed band, in order to make this fit my own particular body size, what I'm gonna do is use my measuring tape and try to wrap this around the lower portion of your stomach, maybe even at the very top of your hips, wherever you would like this sweater to hit you at the very bottom. So again, I have my measuring tape resting at the very top of my hips, which is where I would like my sweater to stop. So according to my measurements, I would like this entire sweater to circumference a total of 32 inches. So because I am working with a front panel and a back panel, I want to divide this measurement in half which gets me to about 16 inches. But again, if you guys are larger than me or smaller than me, feel free to take your own measurements, find out the size that you need to crochet to, and just continue to work on your ribbed band. 
So I've just finished up crocheting my first ribbed band. And for my body size, I crocheted a total of 30 rows. So if I go ahead and stretch it just a little bit, you can see that it does reach the 16 inches across. And again, because my circumference is 32 around, I do wanna crochet this to half that length. And at this point, it's time to start crocheting upwards on the body panel. What I'm going to do is chain two here at the very end of my 30th row. So now that I have a chain of two, what I'm gonna do is just turn my work horizontally. And at this point, I'm gonna be placing stitches across the ribbed band horizontally like this. Picking up here after my chain two, what I wanna do is work with an extended half double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to work those, but I will be using the extended half double crochet for the entirety of the body section. So what I'm gonna do after my chain two for row one, I'm going to yarn over and go right back here into this very first stitch in the row. So I'm just gonna find a place to insert my hook and pull up a loop. And with three on my hook, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through only one loop. So it kind of creates a little single crochet right there. And then again, with three on, yarn over and pull through all three. Let's go ahead and work a few more stitches together. Again, I'm gonna yarn over and find another opening here along my ribbed band. So the way that I like to do this is, usually I like to place a stitch at the very top of a stitch again, working horizontally, and then another stitch at the very base of that row. So again, I'm gonna yarn over and find a spot. Just right here, I'm gonna pick up the actual body of that stitch and pull up a loop. With three on, yarn over and pull through one. And with three on again, yarn over and pull through all three. So there is my second extended half double crochet in the row. And the total number of stitches that you want to place does not exactly matter. You just wanna do your best to make sure that you're not leaving it too much of a gap or placing them too close together. So really just take your best idea into account. Again, I'm just picking up any old spot that seems like it would fit well and placing an extended half double crochet. If I kind of look at this looking vertically, I am placing stitches at the very top of the stitch, and I'll also place another stitch at the very base, or like pick up the body of that stitch when you're looking at this vertically. So again, I'm gonna yarn over, find the next spot to insert, pull up a loop with three on, yarn over, pull through one, and with three on again, yarn over and pull through all three. Coming here to the end of my row, I think I can go ahead and fit two more stitches easily. So let's go ahead and fit them in. This is my 60th stitch right here. And again, I wanna place one more at the very end. So for my pattern and my body size, I have a total of 61 extended half double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to work row two and pretty much the rest of the body panel up until the neck section. So to go ahead and start working on row two, three, four, and so on, here at the end of my row, I'm going to chain two. So I'm always starting off my row with a chain of two. And just like before at this point, I'm gonna place the extended half double crochet into my very first stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up both of those two top loops just because I don't want any specific ribbing. So pick up that very first stitch and both two top loops. And with three on your hook, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through all three. So what I'm going to do is place one extended half double crochet into every single stitch in the row. And you're going to want to repeat this over and over and over for as many rows as you would like, however long you would like this sweater to be. So again, I'm going to yarn over, pick up the very next stitch in my row and place that extended half double crochet. And again, just to reiterate, I do want to pick up every single stitch. And at this moment, there are no increases and no decreases. So I've just finished working up about four rows on this front panel. And this is what those extended half double crochets are looking like. 
And my main goal with this front panel is that I wanna add on as many rows as it's going to take until this top of the front panel reaches the lower section of my neck. All right, so I'm back and as you guys can see, I have worked up the main body portion and at this point I do have a total of 33 rows, which again is reaching to the very base of my neck. From the very top or the neck section of this panel all the way to the very bottom, including the ribbed portion, I have about 17 and a half inches. So now that my panel is officially long enough to reach the base of my neck, what I want to do now is leave off a certain amount of stitches here at the very center of my sweater. That way I can start working on the left and the right shoulder. And what I want to do is work a decrease on the inner portion of the neckline only on every other row. So what I've done here already is calculated out about nine stitches in the very center of my sweater. And again, these stitches are going to be left untouched. From corner to corner, I have a total of 17 and a half inches as well, just reaching across my panel. So taking into account that my panel is 17 and a half inches, I have chosen to leave off nine stitches here at the very center of my panel, and that includes about three inches in length. So if you guys would like, just try to take these measurements into account and size them to your own body correctly. But something that I want to note when you're leaving off stitches here for the neckline is if you have an odd number of stitches across your body panel, you're gonna wanna leave off an odd number of stitches here at the center. That way we have an even number on the left and the right hand side. And likewise, if you have an even number of stitches across your entire body panel, then you'll also leave off an even number of stitches right here at the center. To begin crocheting the shoulder sections, again, I'm going to start off with a chain of two. And just like we did with the main body section, I'm gonna continue to work with the extended half double crochets. So I'm gonna place one extended half double into the top of each stitch until I have two stitches remaining in my row. I'm gonna yarn over, insert and pick up that very first stitch, pull through one, and then pull through all three. So I'm just repeating that same stitch that I taught you guys earlier. And again, I'm gonna stop when I have two stitches remaining at the end of my row. So I'm coming up here to the end of row one for the shoulder section. And as you can see, I have one and two stitches remaining in my row. So what I wanna do here into the last two stitches is work an extended half double crochet decrease. I know that's a mouthful, but let's go ahead and show you guys how it's done. So just like before, I'm going to yarn over and pick up my stitch, pull up a loop, and with three on, I want to yarn over and pull through one, yarn over and pull through two, and now with two on, I'm going to yarn over and pick up that very last stitch in the row, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and with four on, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four. So no, that's a little bit much for a decrease, but that is how we work it for these extended half doubles. So now at this point, I can go ahead and start working on row two. And now that I have chain two here for the start of row two, I can always turn my work. And now at this point, I'm gonna be working backwards from the next section to the edge of the shoulder. So for row two, like I said earlier, there's gonna be no decreases on this row. We're only decreasing on every other row. So I'm gonna start off here with my very first stitch and work across row two like normal, placing one extended half double into each stitch. I'm coming up here to the end of row two on the shoulder section. I'm picking up my very last stitch like normal. And this is what row two looks like. So now we can go ahead and start working on row three. Row three is gonna be a repeat of row one for the shoulder section. I'm just gonna place one extended half double into the top of each stitch until I have those two stitches remaining in my row. I'm coming up here to the end of my row three for the shoulder, and I have two stitches remaining in my row. Again, this is on the inner portion where my neckline is. So into those last two stitches, again, I'm gonna yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, 
and with two on yarn over and pick up that very last stitch and again this is that half double crochet decrease extended half double crochet decrease so with four on yarn over pull through one and with four on yarn over and pull through all four so there is another row with decreases only on the inner portion of the neckline. And again, that is occurring on every other row. So when I go ahead and start row four, I'm gonna work one stitch across with no decreases. And again, when I come back for row five, I will only work one extended half double crochet decrease on the inner portion. So what I'm gonna do now is build up as many rows as I would like until this portion of the top reaches the very top section of my shoulder. Because everybody's body size is different, Different. feel free to add as many rows as you feel necessary but I'm gonna go ahead and work at least a few more sides up to my body see if this section right here is hitting the very top of my shoulder with this being at the very base of my neck and I'll come back on here and show you guys what to do next so I've just finished up working on my first shoulder section and for my body size I have decided to add a total of nine rows and this accounts for about four or four and a half inches from the very base of my neck. I'm working those decreases only on the inner portion on every other row. So now that I have nine rows in total on one shoulder section, it's time to start working here on the other edge. So what I'm gonna do here is cut off my yarn, tie off a knot, and leave a super long tail. And I'm just gonna head over here to the other edge of the shoulder section and start working those nine rows just like I did on the other side. So going into that very first stitch in the row, I'm just going to attach my yarn and tie off a knot. And now that my new yarn has been tied on, I'm gonna pull up a loop and chain two. And again, I'm just gonna be working that same pattern from the left shoulder. So I'm going to work one extended half double crochet all the way down my row until I have two stitches remaining. And then from there, of course, I will work that decrease. Following that on the second row, I will work one stitch across without any decreases. I just wanna match the amount of rows I have on the left side. For this right shoulder section, I'm gonna work a total of nine rows just so that it is symmetrical to the other side. And I'm just taking this moment now to weave in my end as I'm crocheting. That way I just have less work to do at the very end. So I'm just weaving it along my stitches as I'm going. And now at this point that I have my front panel all completed, it's time to start crocheting the back panel. Now when it comes to crocheting the back panel, you're gonna wanna follow the exact same steps with the exact same amount of rows. The only difference is when I come up here to the neckline, I'm actually going to be crocheting right through this section. So with this front panel, including the shoulder sections, I have a total of 42 rows worked up off of this little ribbed band here. So a quick little measurement because I know you guys are going to ask. I have a total of 22 inches in length. So I've already gone ahead and crocheted my matching back panel, but as you guys can see, starting here from the ribbed band, I have the same exact amount of rows working straight upwards. So my piece will end on the same exact amount of rows. But like I mentioned, I just worked straight across my back panel, no decreases, no neckline, just a straight edge here at the very top of my work. So this is what my sweater is looking like so far. And it's time to go ahead and start crocheting the sleeves. So the way that I like to go about this and like the sizing and the length of my sleeves is I will physically take my front panel and hold it up to my body just like so. Try your best to center it, straighten it out. And now at this point is where my measuring tape comes in handy. I'm going to stretch this out. And what I want to do is measure from my wrist to the edge of this front panel. I'm gonna stretch it out and count inches starting from my wrist to the edge of my panel. My measurement starts at two inches and it ends right at 19 inches. So in total, I need about 17 inches of length for each of my sleeves. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on making the first sleeve. So very similar to how we created that ribbed band for the front and back panels, I will also start off with a ribbed band for the cuffs of this sleeve. And this time, instead of chaining 10 plus two for turning corners, I want my cuffs to be just a little bit thinner. So I will be creating a chain of eight plus two for turning. So here's one, two, 
two, three, four. So again, for the cuffs, I will have double crochets of eight in every single row, and I need two more for turning my corners. So there's my two more. Let's go ahead and skip the very first two chains in the row and insert my hook into the third chain from the hook. So I've inserted, I'm gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So again, for this cuff or this ribbed band, I will just be placing one double crochet into each chain in the row. And at the end of every single row, I should have eight double crochet. Here is my eighth double crochet in a row. So to go ahead and get started on row two, just like before, chain two and turn your work. And for row two and the rest of this ribbed cuff, again, I will be working with double crochets, but I only want to pick up the back loop only for every single stitch, except for that very last one. So this is very repetitive, very, very similar to the ribbed band that we made earlier. Again, placing one back loop only double crochet. And here at my very last stitch in the row again, I just like to pick up both two top loops and finish out my eighth double crochet. So this is what your ribbed cuff is going to look like. And for my body size and for my wrist size, I need a total of about 15 rows of these back loop only double crochet. So I'm just gonna continue on with this pattern of back loop only double crochet, one into the top of every single stitch. Feel free to hold this up to your wrist, wrap it around your arm, and just double check that it is long enough to wrap around or encompass your entire wrist. I've just finished crocheting up my 15th row here for my cuff, and this is what she's looking like. So if I just kind of compare it here to my measuring tape, from corner to corner, I have about seven and a half inches. And just to kind of show you guys, again, with this 15 rows or seven and a half inches, it does wrap around my wrist just perfectly. It's loose enough that I can get it on and off without it being too, too tight. So I am gonna stick with this 15 rows for the ribbing. So again, picking up here at the end of my 15th row, I will chain two. And again, just like those front and back panels, I will be placing extended half double crochets horizontally across my ribbed band. But I will note that depending on the type of fit that you would like the sleeves to have on your arm, it does matter how many stitches you want to place across your ribbed band. Now I'm going for pretty much like an average style fit, not too baggy, not too tight. So for my sleeves, I want to add two extended half double crochet into every fourth stitch, and you guys are gonna see exactly how I do that. But again, if you guys would like an even baggier look, feel free to add more extended half double crochets. But like I said, let's go ahead and start off here with row one on the sleeves. Again, I'm gonna yarn over and just find any old good spot to place my extended half double crochets. So here is my first extended half double in the row. That makes the very first stitch. Again, just looking for any good placement to pick up an area and work my stitches. There's two. Here is my third in the row. And now that I'm coming up here onto my fourth stitch in a row, like I said, I wanna be placing two extended half double crochets into every fourth stitch. So because that is my fourth stitch, again, I'm just gonna go right back into that same spot where I picked it up and place a little increase. And this is just going to ensure that we do have enough width to our sleeve to wrap loosely around our arm. After every fourth stitch, place that increase. And I'm just gonna start the count all over again. So starting here, I'm gonna pick up the next spot. Here is one extended. Two extended. Here is my third extended half double crochet. Now that I'm coming up on my count of four, I will place two. So there's one. I'm gonna go right back into that same stitch to place an increase. So I'm just gonna repeat this across my entire cuff here. And at the very end, in case you guys don't have an exact number count of like multiples of four, it doesn't really matter. Just add those increases wherever you feel it fits it best. I'm gonna continue this count of four to the very end of my row. 
So I'm starting to come up here to the very end of row one here for the cuff. I've just added my double increase right here into the fourth stitch. And as you guys can probably tell, I probably won't have enough room for four stitches. So like I said, I'm just going to finish out the row like normal. If you can fit in that multiple of four, that is super great. But if not, if you guys are like me, I'm only gonna have room for three stitches here before I hit the end of my row, and that is totally fine. So here, this actually makes my 38th extended half double crochet for row one, and that's what I'm gonna stick with for the rest of the sleeve. So now that I have 38 stitches, I have a nice little number count that I can remember on every single row. Here for row two, I'm just gonna chain two at the very start of my row. Just like those front and back panels, I'm just going to be placing one extended half double into the very top of every single stitch. So again, for my sleeves at the end of every single row, I should have 38 extended half double crochet. If you guys are trying to make this pattern in a larger or smaller size, the number count does not exactly matter. Just make sure that you guys aren't adding too many stitches. Keep track of the total number at the end of each row, just so that your panels are nice and straight. Here for row two and the rest of my sleeve, I'm just placing one extended half double into the top of each stitch. No more increases and no decreases. I'm pretty much just working straight up and making one gigantic long rectangle. So I'm just gonna continue working on this panel, adding rows as I go and checking it with my measuring tape just to make sure that I do reach that total of 17 inches for my body size and my measurements. So I'm back and I have completed up my very first sleeve. For my body measurements, I chose to go with about 32 rows in total, again with those extended half double crochet. If I go ahead and just turn this sideways and give you guys a quick measurement, I do want this sleeve to hit me at about 17 inches long. So starting from the very edge or base of that ribbed cuff, all the way up to the very last and 32nd row. I actually have exactly 17 inches. So my first little sleeve panel is officially completed and ready to go. So now at this point, you guys can go ahead and make a second matching sleeve because of course we do need two sleeves for our sweater. I've just gone ahead really quickly here and whipped up my second sleeve. So now that I have them both matching, it's time to start sewing all of our panels together. I'm gonna start off here with my back panel and my front panel. So I'm just gonna lay these on top of each other. There's no right or wrong side, so it doesn't necessarily matter which way you guys have them facing. And what I'm going to do with these super long tails or ends is I'm gonna use my darning needle to help me whip stitch this top shoulder edge together. And likewise, I'm gonna go ahead over to the other side or the other corner, attach a new yarn and whip stitch only this top shoulder section right here. And starting here on the outer corner, I'm simply going to be picking up both two top loops on both panels. So I've picked up both two top loops. You should have about four loops sitting there on your darning needle and just go ahead and whip stitch that and pull it through. I'm just gonna throw my yarn over. And again, I'm gonna move on to the next stitch, pick up both two top loops and likewise pick up the other stitch on your front panel. And go ahead and pull that yarn through. And I'll just be repeating this all the way down my shoulder seam. So now that we officially have the front and the back panel attached to themselves, I'm gonna start adding on the sleeves. So the way that I'm gonna go about attaching them on is I'm going to open up the sweater like so. So I pretty much just have a super gigantic rectangle. I'm gonna lie it flat and come to one edge of the sweater. And now at this point, I'm gonna take one of my sleeves and I want to lay it right across the center seam on the side of the panel. So what I'm gonna do is count out the correct number of stitches, make sure that I have my middle stitch placed right 
centered here on this seam. And just as before, I'm gonna use a darning needle and whip stitch the sleeve alongside this edge of the panel. So now that I have my first sleeve attached here on this side of the panel, I'm just gonna flip my sweater around to the other edge. And likewise, I will attach the other sleeve in the exact same fashion. So now at this point, this is what your sweater should be looking like. Essentially, all of the panels are open and spread out. So at this point, in order to start seaming together the actual sleeves and the sides of the panel, I'm going to pinch back up here where our shoulder seam is. And of course, I will bring the back panel and the front panel flat on top of each other, just like we did earlier when we were seaming together the shoulders. And now at this point, you can also flatten out the sleeves onto each other. I'm just laying them in half like so as if you were to wear the sweater. So at now at this point, we can actually start seaming together the edge or the side of the panels. What I'm gonna do is attach a new yarn here to the edging of my cuffs and I'm gonna go back to my hook and start slip stitching the two panels together. I'm gonna work all the way up my sleeves. I will hit the under armpit corner and then just continue slip stitching all the way down the side of your panel. So once I finish up the left side, of course, I will move on to the right hand side and follow these same steps. And I'll attach a new strand of yarn right here, go back to my hook and start slip stitching the two panels all the way up the sleeve, hit the armpit, and then work my way down the side panels. So I've just gone ahead and attached my new yarn. I'm gonna pull up a loop, chain one, and at this point I'm just gonna pick up both panels anywhere that I see fit, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. So again, I'm just picking up corresponding stitches making sure to grab both panels on the sleeve, make sure that you're piercing through, and just very gently and lightly slip stitch. We don't want this stitch to be so tight that it causes a bunch of bulk underneath our arms, so I'm just working nice and light with my tension. All right, so I have finished seaming up all of the sides to this sweater. And now to go ahead and finish up the neckline, I'm gonna flip it inside out so that the right side is showing on the outside. So now that I have my sweater turned to the right side out, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach my yarn here to this edging or the very top of this shoulder seam. And now that my new yarn is tied on, I'm just gonna pull up a loop and chain one. And from this point, I'm just choosing to go around my entire neckline with a row of regular single crochet. So again, I'm just gonna pick up stitches wherever I see fit and work a basic single crochet. Do your best to space these out as evenly as possible. We don't want there to be too, too tight of stitches. At the same time, we don't want a huge gap along our neckline. So just take your time and make sure that you're spacing these out as evenly as possible. And now that I've made it back here to the very start of my row, I'm just going to be slip stitching into that chain one that I made at the very beginning of the row. So I'm gonna pick up that stitch and slip stitch my first row shut. So now at this point, again, I'm gonna chain one and turn my work around. And what I want to do for the second, third, and so on rows is that I want to be working with a front post and a back post stitch over and over and over until I get a nice little ribbed effect along the neckline. I wanna work with a front post and a back post single crochet. So here at this very first single crochet in the row, I'm going to wrap my hook around the back and poke out through the front. And I'm just picking up the actual body of this stitch and create my first single crochet. And now for this next one, I'm gonna go through the back poke around and pick out through the front. So I'm just alternating between a front post and a back post single crochet. Again, looking here for my next stitch in the row, poke through the back around and back out the front for a front post stitch. 
And now for the next one, start from the back of the stitch, wrap your hook around the body and poke out the back. So again, I'm just replicating front post and back post stitches back and forth and back and forth until the very end of my row. To start working on row three of our neckline, I'm gonna repeat those same steps backwards, but again, wherever I have a front post stitch, like right here at this very first stitch, I'm going to front post right on top of that. So we're gonna help build upon that ribbed effect and make a front post. And now looking for my next stitch, wherever you have a back post, add a back post right on top. So it's gonna get a little bit tight here working, but that's what's so great about the neckline is that we do want to kind of tighten up and create a stiffer collar neckline. So again, right here, I have another front post stitch. So I'm going to front post right on top of that. And then at my next stitch, I have a back post. So just repeat front posts on top of front posts and back post stitches on top of back posts all the way around. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat this for as many rows as you would like until you have a collar that is as thick as you would like. So I'm just gonna continue on here again, alternating my front and back post stitches. And I think I'm gonna add on at least six or seven rows until I have a nice thick collar. I'm almost done here with the collar section and I've worked up a total of seven rows with this front and back post single crochet. So now at this point here at the very end of my row, I'm just going to slip stitch into that chain one at the very beginning of my row. So I've inserted my hook, I'm gonna pull through a loop and slip stitch row seven shut. So at this point I can go ahead, cut my yarn and leave a nice long tail. And what I'm going to do is just yarn over and pull this strand through so that I can tie off a knot. So I'm gonna give it a nice gentle tug and that is seven rows again on the collar section. So at this point, our sweater is fully complete. Let's go ahead and lay her out on the table. This is what my sweater is looking like. This is the gorgeous collar neckline. It turned out so much better than I expected. So here she is in all of her glory. She's nice and long. And as you guys can see at this point, the only thing left that I have to do is to hand weave in all of my super long ends. So I'm gonna go through my project, find wherever I have strands of yarn that are just kind of dangling out. And what I'm gonna do is pick up my darning needle and of course, I'm just going to be threading and weaving my ends through my project to hide them as best as I can. And then at that point, your sweater is fully complete. So I'm just turning here to the very bottom edge of my sweater. This is just along one side seam, and I do have this super long tail, so I'm just gonna weave it through the eye of my darning needle. And how I go about hiding my ends is rather simple. In this case, because my tail is so long, I do want to thread my yarn through this seam that I have right here. So I want to hide this yarn through the seam. And then once I come up on the body section, what I'm gonna do is weave it one direction and then back the same direction. 